Hey everyone, I'm so glad that you are joining us. Welcome to Echo Church Online. I cannot wait to worship with you and whether you call Echo home or if you are new to us, listen, we are so honored to be invited into your home today. Uh, throughout the service, I love to get people talking in their homes and right here online. It's really important not just to watch, but to actively engage as we do church online. So uh, as we get started, let's get talking with each other. The comment sections on YouTube and on Facebook, they serve as our virtual lobby. So I want everyone to take part. Listen, no one watches alone. Now, of course, Thanksgiving is coming up this week. So let me ask you a question. What are you thanking God for this year? It's been a weird year, but don't let that stop you from having an attitude of gratitude. Maybe you're thanking God for your family, uh, for others. Maybe it's your health, uh, someone else. It might be for your job. Uh, perhaps others are thanking God for his kindness or goodness or faithfulness in their lives. Uh, someone might be excited to see someone this holiday season. It could be a number of things. Come on, say it out loud at home and type it online right now. What are you thanking God for? You have picked a great day to worship together and I'm excited to share with you part four of our series, In God We Trust. Today is also a very special service that we call Legacy Sunday. Our legacy offering is a special once a year gift that we make to fuel the mission of our church and echo God's love across our city and to the nations. And it will also accelerate Echo's plans in 2021. We'll share more throughout the service, but let me give you just two quick notes. If you'd like to participate in the offering, there are two easy ways to do that, and you can choose whichever works best for you. If you're used to giving online, you can continue to do that and just select Legacy Offering as the fund in which you'd like to give. Or anyone can text the word Legacy to the number 94253. We'll send you a link. When you open it, you can not only give at this location, but you can also share prayer requests that you have for the year ahead. We cannot wait to see how we get to be God's love and light thanks to your generosity. Hey, if you're new to the Echo family, would you let us know that you're joining us online? Uh, simply text the word STEPS to 94253 and let us know how we can be praying for you. Listen, it would be our honor not only to meet you and get to understand you and know you, but to also pray alongside of you as well. As we prepare our hearts to worship God today, I wanna to encourage you directly from our Bible reading plan. I wanna ask you to pay special attention to the words of the writer. They are seeking God with steadfastness and, and I wanna invite us to do the same in our homes today. It says this in Psalm 119, teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes and I will keep it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to selfish gain. And then it closes with this, turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways. You know, I'm so encouraged and challenged by this passionate pursuit of God. The writer asked for understanding in order to give their whole heart to God, to be led by God, to delight in his ways, and then concludes, turn my eyes from worthless things so that I can have life in your ways. I wonder if that resembles your own heart today. During the week and during tough seasons of our life, worthless things can begin to take part and take our souls hostage. But in moments like these, we can come back to God and make more room in our hearts for Him. Why don't we begin by doing that right now? Will you pray with me? Father God, we thank you for this opportunity today. And even on your own at home, why don't you just open your hands, open your heart to God and say, Lord, whatever it is you want to say to me today, I'm listening. My heart is open. I want to seek you with all that I have. God, if there be worthless things in my life that are taking my soul hostage, Lord, I want to give them back to you today. Reveal them. In this moment, I give you everything. It's in Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Come on, let's lift our voices to our great God.
Hey everybody, I'm Austin and welcome to Echo Church Online. Thanks so much for worshiping with us today. We're honored to be invited into your home. Whether you're joining us for the very first time or if you call Echo your home, we hope that you feel a part of the family. It is a wonderful day to worship together, and we are in part four of our sermon series called In God We Trust. In just a moment, Pastor Chad will help us trust God in new areas of our lives. We encourage you to grab a notebook right now and be prepared to write down some notes for this week. Or you can follow along and take notes on the echochurch.cc app. You can download it right on your app store right now. Before we do that, let me give you a few important notes. First, as you're watching online, we encourage you to engage as well. Now hit the like button and comment, and it helps others watching right now to also engage. This is the perfect time to hit the share button too. When you do so, around 100 of your friends online can see the service and have the opportunity to listen in. Next, begin making plans to join us in person for the Christmas season. We are planning to fully regather in person for worship on Sunday, December 13th. Whether you want to join us online or in person, we can hardly wait for the holidays. Also, as we head into the new year, we want to help you find financial peace. If you're looking for help with budgeting, financial planning, or you'd like some practical resources, then I want you to text the word STEPS to 94253 right now. We'll send you the login information and immediately you'll have access to all of Dave Ramsey's online resources. Finally, if you're looking to connect and grow with Echo Church, we want to invite you to participate in an online course that we call Echo Steps. Simply text the word STEPS to 94253 and we'll be in touch. Echo Steps is designed to meet you where you are and help you take your next spiritual steps. Whether you want to learn how to pray and read the Bible, learn about baptism, or begin serving, Echo Steps is the place to begin. Again, simply just text the word STEPS to 94253 and let us know. Now, let's prepare our hearts to hear an encouragement from God's Word as we dive deep into our sermon series in God We Trust. Hey guys, once again, welcome to Echo Church Online. I am really excited to dive into part four of our series, In God We Trust. This year feels chaotic, but I want us to remember that in the midst of unsettling times, there is a God you can trust. God is bigger than our problems. God is working behind the scenes. He's working for us and for our good. You will never regret trusting God with all of your heart. Hey, before we hop into the message, uh, let me share some important notes for today's legacy offering. We know that many of you have been praying for weeks, asking God uh, how you can participate. And listen, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for that. The legacy offering is all about making a difference. Uh, this offering is used to bless local organizations that fight hunger, homelessness, and domestic violence. It's used to launch new church plants and encourage new church planters across the country. It sets us up for international mission work and it accelerates the vision of ECHO in the new year. When you're ready to participate, uh, there are two ways that you can give. Simply use the method that works best for you. If you're accustomed to giving online, and I know that's a lot of you, uh, simply select the Legacy Offering Fund when you make your donation. Or anyone is welcome to text the word LEGACY to 94253. We'll send you a link via text. When you click on that link, you'll be directed to a form where you can not only make your donation, but you can also share prayer requests for the new year. This is a special offering that we've done since our first Christmas season. And God has blessed it and us at every time. And I cannot wait to see how we get to be God's hands and feet here on earth this year. Listen, thank you for your participation. Let's be generous as we echo God's love this holiday season. 
All right, let's jump into part four of our series, In God We Trust. I've been so encouraged as I've heard numerous stories of people trusting God with more and more areas of their lives. Listen, this is what it means to grow in God. As we trust in new ways, God is able to take us to new levels in our lives. The title of today's message is Two Short Words Beyond us. Come on, type that online right now. Say it out loud at home, beyond us. At the heart of following Jesus and being the church is having a beyond us kind of thinking. Today, of course, is a special Sunday where we give a special once a year gift that we call the Legacy Offering. It's taking time to slow down and have perspective on what matters most. It's asking the question, am I accumulating on earth what I cannot keep? or my investing in heaven, what I cannot lose. The legacy offering is beyond us thinking. It's asking God to take our gift and to multiply it into the hearts and lives that will experience his love and hopefully respond to his grace. A legacy gift has two sides to it. Uh, someone gives the gift and of course someone receives it. While Echo is only three years old, we are recipients of a legacy. Our identity has been passed down since the beginning of the ancient church and our being was literally gifted from individuals and churches all over the U.S. Our gifts today receive that legacy and then they pass it on forward. We build the future of the church. We echo God's love far beyond these walls. So often we fall prey to thinking right here, right now. But listen, God is always thinking nations and generations. Inherent to being the church is to think beyond us. In fact, that's the heart of what it means to be Echo Church. What God does in us is never just for us. It must be echoed or given away. There are two verses that have been instrumental in my understanding of what it means to trust God with our whole lives and to follow after Jesus. The first one comes from the Old Testament. God is giving vision for the nation of Israel. They've been in exile and God tells them that he'll bring them back and restore them. But then he tells them to think beyond. Watch this. It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Do you see it? God says, yes, I'll bring you back, Israel, but I'll also use you to go beyond, to shine my light that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Israel was thinking right here, right now, but God was thinking nations and generations. And isn't it interesting that God uses the language of light and darkness? Can we agree that 2020 has been a dark year? Yes, things could definitely be worse, but relatively speaking, it's been dark. And what God spoke then is relevant to us today. I wanna to use you to be a light inside dark places, the dark seasons of history. And thanks to your generosity, we haven't moved backwards this year. We've just found new ways to be light. Because here's what we believe as a church. And you may wish to write this down. The best way to beat the darkness is to be a source of light. Come on, soak that in and think about that for, for just a moment. Think about how it fits into your daily life. The best way to beat the darkness is to be a source of light. God says, it's too small a thing that I do a work in your life alone. I want to echo what I do in your heart into the lives of others. The second scripture comes right out of the New Testament book of Acts. It's right before Jesus ascends to heaven and hands the keys of the mission to the early church. They are literally his final words on earth. He says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. As Jesus stands around with his followers, he essentially says, I want you to think beyond us. What the Holy Spirit is doing in you, take throughout the city and in the neighboring regions and to the end of the earth. It's almost the exact same language that God used back in Isaiah 49. 
What's happening here, it can't stay here. It must be echoed and given away. It's in the heart of God. It's at the beginning of the church. It shapes who we are even today. We are a beyond us church. The gift we give today is not about today. It's not even about us. It's about the people that will come and experience God's grace. It's about the people watching online that will grow into a life-altering relationship with Jesus. It's about the future we're building. It's about people around the country suffering the most from COVID. It's about people right here in our own community who will receive God's hand of mercy from us as we partner with organizations on the front lines of hunger, homelessness, and domestic violence. God loves us so much that he not only transforms our lives, but he uses our hearts to transform the lives of others through us. I think you can sum up following Jesus like this. As God floods me with love and grace and mercy, I use my life to help others encounter God as well. It's that simple, yet the implications are profound. So as we dream about how God can use our gift to echo beyond us today, I want to give us three ways to see how God can use our lives beyond us. If you're ready, won't you type, I'm ready online. Come on. Uh, you, those of you watching at home, you may be getting a little too comfortable. Straighten up a little. Come on. I'm ready. All right, here we go. I want to give us three prayers that we can pray to live a life that outlives us. Ready? Number one, God, use my treasure to lift eyes to you. God, use my treasure to lift eyes to you. Now, I won't spend too much time on this because I think we've allowed God to open our hearts here over the past couple of weeks. However, considering that many people will make a gift by faith today, let me encourage you one more time with what the scriptures say that God does with your generosity. Paul says this in his second letter to the church in Corinth. Yes, God will give you much so that you can give away much. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will break out into thanksgiving and praise to God for your help. So two good things will happen as a result of your gifts. Those in need are helped and they overflow with thanks to God. Listen, we should never overlook the layers of blessings that God gives us whenever we obey his ways. Paul's reminding us that either of these would be more than enough. And yet God does at least two things with your generosity. First, God takes your gift to tangibly help the people you intend to support. God uses the generosity from one of his children to support another child. And as a parent, I can begin to conceive how much this will bless the heart of the Heavenly Father. And second, God uses your gift to produce thanksgiving inside of the heart of the receiver. Simply put, generosity results in eyes being lifted to God, producing change in the recipient. It can serve as a reminder to someone wondering if God cares. It can be a spark of hope to someone who has given up. Your job is to resemble God in the giving, and God's job is to get it to the right person at the right time. It's a prayer that brings joy to God's heart. Use my treasure to lift eyes to you. Number two, God use my talents to serve you. God not only gives us treasure, but he also gives us talents. When God forms us and fashions us, he develops abilities within us. He produces unique passions and experiences in order to bring about ministry in the world. God will perfectly grow and mature you so that you can bring about growth in someone else. God will take it all your interest, your skills, your desires, and even your hardships, and he'll take it all so that it brings about his grace inside someone else. Again, let's look at Paul's second letter to the Corinthian church. What a wonderful God we have. He is the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of every mercy, and the one who so wonderfully comforts and strengthens us in our hardships and trials. And why does he do this? So that when others are troubled, needing our sympathy and encouragement, we can pass on to them the same help and comfort God has given us. 
as God meets us and comforts us, what do we do? We look beyond us so that others can experience the very comfort that God has showered over our lives. It's why I love our dream team so much. The dream team is our volunteer team, but come on, a dream team sounds a lot better, doesn't it? Uh, but listen, it's an appropriate title because together this team does at least two things. Uh, one, they bring about a larger dream of seeing a church that helps anyone feel welcome and help everyone experience God's love. And two, as they serve God's purpose, their personal dreams are coming into fruition. It's a team of people that have experienced God's comfort and they can't help but share that with others. And I want you to know, you, you have a place on that team. If you're watching online for this season, listen, you have a place on the team. If you're planning to gather in person with us, you have a place on the team. Things have shifted over the last eight months. And I want you to know that there are needs on every team. And so whether you want to help kids encounter God's love, or if you want to set the stage in the auditorium with worship and production, uh, maybe perhaps you want to serve on the setup and takedown teams, or if you want to help make Echo feel like home by serving on our welcome teams, listen, there is a place on the team for you. If you're watching each week online, we need people that want to help drive the conversation online. Pray this prayer today and listen to how God responds. Use my talents to serve you. God used my treasure, God used my talents, and number three, God used my time to share you. What a powerful prayer, and quite honestly, I think it's at the core of what it means to follow after Jesus. One more time, let's look to Paul's words. He says this in his letter to the Roman church. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, uh, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. I love that verse. What, what, what a wonderful verse. It says so well what God is expecting of us. We take our everyday lives and we place it before God as an offering. In essence, you're praying, God, everywhere I am today, let me be a light in the darkness. Let me be a voice of hope. Let me see with your eyes. God, here's my life. Use it so others can meet with you. It's a beautiful mindset. And I think it's at the heart of what it means to follow Jesus. And what I love about it is that it starts where you are. God may send you to a mission field on the other side of the world, but he will always call you to echo his love right where you are. I remember back some years ago when I worked at a little coffee shop called Starbucks. Maybe you've heard of it. Over time, as my coworkers got to know me, they knew that I was a follower of Jesus and I would do whatever possible to encourage and build them up. Uh, in time, because of their trust in me, I got to share Jesus with them almost every day. But here's the funny thing. I wouldn't even have to bring Jesus up. They would come to me with questions and prayer requests and even advice. Now, not everyone was interested and I never pushed anyone. Uh, one young man in particular had zero interest, and honestly, uh, he'd do whatever he could to demonstrate a lifestyle very different from what I lived. In time, as he learned that I wasn't there to judge him, I just wanted to encourage him, uh, he would also begin asking questions about faith. And soon he came to our church. And I'll never forget the Sunday that he surprised me by coming. Uh, he sat on the front row, and when it was time for prayer, he raised his hand to begin following Jesus. You see, offering your time back to God, it starts right where you are, and it's as simple as sharing your story. In kindness, you're letting others know how God is filling you up with hope and joy and purpose. There's nothing like being around someone that is on fire for God, and people can't help but want to be around you. It can be you sharing your story with others in your sphere of influence. Whether at work or maybe at school, you're letting them know what God is doing in your life as they share their own concerns and their own journeys. 
And it can be as simple, listen, it can be as simple as sharing encouragement on social media. Come on, no one ever gets mad at someone for being uplifting on Facebook. And listen, every time you hit the share button during the online service, around 100 people in your friend list will see our service. In fact, one of the first people we got to baptize here at Echo first learned of us from a simple like on Facebook. My wife Katie had posted that we were coming to start Echo. A friend on Facebook liked the post and then a friend of a friend saw it. Uh, They showed up on Echo's launch day three years ago and in time we got to baptize her husband. Start where you are. Share your story and come on, invite someone to church. It has never been easier to invite someone to church. All of us know people that are struggling and looking for hope. And we've purposely chosen to do church online here on Facebook and YouTube, the two largest platforms on the planet, because most of your friends are already here. So whether you send them a link or you share the service, you're making it possible for them to find hope, healing, and encouragement during this difficult season. Back when we were at the YMCA, there was an employee that would often work on Saturday evenings. And every Saturday, a small team from Echo would go in and we'd pray and we'd roll out to help us set up for the next morning. And when this building supervisor was there, he'd often help us and we'd get to talking. And each time we talked, I would kindly invite him to church. And can I tell you, I almost fell over one Sunday when I walked out of our 9 a.m. service and he was in the hallway waiting to come in for the 1030 a.m. service. And if I remember correctly, he gave his life to Jesus that Sunday. Soon after, he was baptized and now he's one of the key volunteers on our dream team. Listen, you never know what can happen when you give God your time each day, wherever you are. Opportunities will arise to share your story or to invite someone to church. And at just the right time, God will do a transformative work in their lives. Listen, that's my story. I desperately wanted to know God, but I I didn't trust Christians and I was afraid to go to church. But when a friend invited me, I jumped at the opportunity. And listen, my life and my family's life and more people that I can count have been impacted because one person had the courage to ask me to join them at church. Who are we? We are a beyond us church. We aren't consumed with right here, right now. No, we're thinking with God to nations and generations. What God does in us is never just for us. It must be given away. We readily say to our God, use my treasure to lift eyes to you. Use my talents to serve you. Use my time to share you. And I'm telling you, God loves to come alongside of us and put wind in our sails, bless our steps, and walk closely with us when this is our prayer. So God, give us this beyond us mindset. We want our time, our talent, our treasure to echo into eternity. We know that there are single parents in our community and God, we know they're hanging on by a thread. There are households fighting depression while others are facing grim financial realities. Some have relationships that are falling apart and others are doing everything they can to keep it all together right now. And we cry out, God, please use our lives to help them find your hope. Use our gifts to lift their eyes to you. Use our talents to create spaces where people meet with you. Let our time not be consumed with us, but with you and being your light to a world in need. Hey, listen, as we keep praying today, some watching are recognizing that they have a very real spiritual need. What does that mean? Simply put, you realize that you need Jesus. You need God's hope, God's peace, and God's love. And it starts with asking for God's forgiveness. Listen, there's nothing we can do on our own to get back to God or to heal the hole in our hearts. In his great love, God sent his perfect son, Jesus. Jesus died on the cross so you can be forgiven. Jesus rose up to new life so that anyone who calls on the name of Jesus will not only be saved, 
but they too will be made 100% new, brought back to life. Today, as you're watching online, there are those of you, you recognize that you don't have that peace. You don't have that joy. So what do you do? You believe that Jesus is enough. Those of you who say, yes, I, I want to let go of my sin, my life, my past, and I want to hold on to Jesus. I, I want to follow him. You, maybe you'll say, Jesus, today by faith, I give you my whole life. That's your prayer. You're, you're ready. Listen, now's the moment. You need his forgiveness. You need his grace. That's why you're here. This is your moment. You say, yes, Jesus, today I give my life to you. If that's you right now, would you pray with me? Don't wait. You can pray out loud or in your own heart, something like this. Jesus, I give you my life. I believe you died to forgive me. I believe you rose up from the dead to make me alive. And today I choose to follow you. Guide me to follow you with my whole life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, let me be the first to celebrate this important spiritual step with you. I'm so proud of you, and I, I want you to do something before you do anything else. Come on, I need you to do this. You cannot walk this journey with God alone. You need a church family. So right now, would you text the word STEPS to 94253, and on the form we'll send you, check the box letting us know the spiritual decision you made. And we'll follow up with you and, and help you know your next spiritual steps. Do not wait. Come on, right now, text STEPS the 94253. Hey, in just a moment, we'll continue to lift our voices to the powerful name of Jesus and spend time in God's presence. Let me just give you some super quick notes before we do. For anyone that's wanting prayer, uh, maybe you're interested in baptism or just wanting to take some spiritual next steps, you also can text the word STEPS to 94253 and let us know how God is leading you. Listen, we are here to help you continue growing in God, even if you're watching at home. Again, if you're ready to participate in the Legacy Offering, you choose which option is best for you to participate. There are two ways. If you're used to giving online, uh, simply go to echochurch.cc and click click on the give button. If you'd like to use the echochurch.cc app, again, click on the give button there at the bottom. And then you can simply select legacy offering on the tab with your donation. That's the first option. Others, uh, maybe you've got some prayer requests that you would like to share with us as you make your gift. We love to pray alongside you as you're making bold requests of God for the new year. If that's you, then do this. Text word legacy to 94253. Click on the link that will send you and there you can make your donation and share your prayer request. That's option two. However you choose to participate, listen, thank you for your generosity as we together echo God's love across our city and then on to the nations. Hey, let me also remind you that if you have a preschool and elementary kids there at home, uh, hop on our YouTube channel for their uptown and midtown worship and video lessons. They are a lot of fun and a really great and easy way to invest spiritually in your household. Hey, I can't wait for next Sunday as we continue in this series, In God We Trust. Hey, come on, this week, follow Jesus with your whole life. Know that you are not alone because listen, since the beginning, we are in this together. As we trust God with our lives, he is faithful to build us up. Remember this week, let's have a beyond us mindset, asking God to use our time, talent, and treasure to echo his love wherever we go. Hey guys, we love you. We're here for you and we'll see you next week. Let's lift our voices to our great God. Come on.